Hi everyone, this is Diane. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel today. We are working on um, journals with a rustic country theme and I'm using a digital kit from Junk Journal Mama called Rustic Country. I will link that kit below. Uh, we have done the vi uh, two videos with the ephemera that I've made. Uh, one of them was with music paper, it goes that way, and they were little um, little journaling pages and this has a little pocket here to tuck something in. So I finished those up and that took me pretty much all day yesterday, all of my working hours, to, to uh, make all of these. I think this is the one we did on camera. Yeah. And they have the little glassine bag. Some of them have a little glassine bag with a tag and I sewed some feedback fabric to cardstock there. Just used a different stamp on each one. So some of them have the glassine bag and some of them are like a, like a trifold except I glued the one fold down so it's a little pocket. And then these I finished, so I had to make six of these bags, but I'm having trouble getting the, I don't know what kind of glue to use to get things to stick to the glassine bag. If you have an idea, let me know, because yeah, it wants to come off. But these are the tags we made for in there. I can't sew it on because they're a bag. But they, they turned out pretty. So I hope I can get them to work. And they are going to be a page and a signature. And that one's coming off. No, it's not coming off. It's just the pleat of the bag. So it will be sewn into a signature like this. So it would be a little page. And then you flip through and then you get to that side. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but they all have journaling space on the inside. And I cut and collated the papers, and this is an example of the digital kit. Very pretty. And there are lots of journaling cards too. And I would like to make some of these pieces of ephemera. These are digitals of um, from the mushroom market of little clusters that she made and made digitals of, but I want to use these as a uh, inspiration for making my own in the colors that I want for this. But before I get going on any more decorating or ephemera, I wanted to get started on the covers. So I decided to use one of my vintage feed sack or not feed sack but flower sack or whatever. These are all different for different things. One of them is for corn seed I think. And I went through them and I think I've settled on this one because I want something that I can uh, add to and I didn't want to cover up images like like on that. So what did I pick? Because I need two. Maybe that one. I don't remember now. Let's take a look at this one because I know I picked this one. It has this image on the front, Kansas Milling Company, and it has the eagle and the shield. But I can take the back side, which has print on it, which I will use. So if I cut that part off and then folded it over onto a book, it's got print on it, guaranteed silk floss flower. And you can see where the it was wrinkled when it was printed, so the print is, there's a blank space and the print is um, off kilter. Should have been like that. So that's kind of a cool, um, what do you call it? Mistake. Misprint. 
So I thought I would use this because then I can add little patches and uh, my own embellishments to it and then save this part for another kind of a journal. And I think maybe I had the, the same in mind for this. Yeah, that's tall enough. This side is Fairlawn brand. Must be flour because it says milled from choice Western hard wheat for all baking purposes. This is a thinner fabric. So yeah, I guess I'll go with those. So I'll just cut them apart right, right from the get-go. I just thought you might want to watch me as I figure things out for how I'm going to do this. have to iron these pieces which probably should have done that before I started the video because I'm not going to iron it on camera and I need to iron it before I glue it down I think maybe not scissors in there. Okay. I'm only going to work on one today, so I'll cut the other one up later. I've decided after measuring the pages, which are about five inches, right? Five, five and a half inches by eight, almost eight and a half inches, um, that I want the cover to be Five. Well, I'm going to make it six inches. If I if it's too big, I will trim it. Six by nine. Um, I'm going to try scoring it kind of with this. I use my cutting blade, but it won't cut all the way through. But it gives me a nice straight guide for cutting. I was going to mark it, draw a line, and then cut it, but I don't. I have trouble getting it straight with my scissors. So, six inches. I know this dulls the blade, but my blade is already getting pretty dull. So that cuts it pretty good. I could just tear it apart there. And I can use this part for the spine. This is cardstock, or not cardstock, um, chipboard that I get from Amazon. I can leave the link for it below. Because you need a heavy enough weight and I had a hard time figuring out first time I ordered chipboard because I had a stock of whoops a stock of chipboard that a friend had given me but it didn't have the weight information on it when she gave it to me and so I didn't know so I took a good guess I read reviews and everything and took a good guess and this is the weight I landed on and it works great let me see if my... I have a package that's not open. Because I ordered two by mistake one time, and that's fine, because I'll use it. Um, 50 point, it says. 8.5 by 11, 50 point craft chipboard sheets, and there's 20 in a package. But I will link it below. 
and I, I'm going to just make my spine two inches and stick to that. Try not to make my pages so fat that two inches is going to be a gator mouth. So there, there are my, oh no, I need to cut it to nine inches. Oh, you know what? This is only eight and a half. And that will not work. That will cut it too close. I will use this for another journal. So now I have to cut it this way. I have to cut it this way so that I can have it nine inches. So I'm going to cut this six inches. Okay. Six inches. By nine inches. And that leaves us with Two and a half. Let's just leave it at two and a half by nine. Here's our journal cover, and I have one cut for a future journal. Get some things out of my way. Now I just want to decide where I want this to be. I can leave a little bit of blank space on the edge of the book and use some embellishment there if I have to. Let me fold this design in half and see where we end up. Half the design. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that works. And there's just um, maybe an inch of blank space right there. Oh, but you know what? I have to have a spine in there. We're just thinking on the fly here. <laughs> you better watch out for me today, I guess. So I'll have to have a spine in there. I, I, um, uh, trying to decide if I want to have less print on the back or just let it be. There'd be a couple inches. There's more empty space on that side. So I like it that like that, I think. And we have a couple inches over here. So I'm going to cut it so that there's enough all the way around to fold over.
And this is quite sheer. So I'm wondering if I want to put a piece of batting here. I have to get it out. It's in a box under my sewing table. I've got lots of cheesecloth down here. Okay, here is a layer of batting. It's just a cotton batting. that'll be better. And do I want it on the spine also? I don't know. For now, I'm going to cut it the same size as the cover. Well, actually, I, I do want it to be smaller than the cover because it's not going to wrap around the cover. It's just going to cover the front and back. So let's just do that. I'll cut it this size. Told you, you're going to watch as I figure it out. This a little bit. I need two of this size. So let's let's just glue this to the cover because we know we're gonna want that. Now I have in the past um, painted my chipboard with a white or off-white paint if I had, usually it's a, a vintage sheet or a piece of light colored fabric that you can see the brown through. And I didn't necessarily want to put a little padding in there. It's very, very thin, but I have painted it just to 
make it white back there instead of brown. And that works too. So if I don't put anything on the spine, I will have to paint the spine. I think we're going to go ahead and cover the spine with a little bat batting. Find the center. Just want to see what it will look like. I was thinking this is the front and it's not. This will be the front. Okay, let's do that again. You really have to keep your thinking cap on while you're doing this. Just don't do it mindlessly. Think and rethink. So this is what the front cover would be like with that much space. And this is what the back cover would look like. what the spine would look like. Now I really want to glue this. So if you will bear with me, I'm going to go get my iron. about that. I really am doing this on the fly today. So I got this ironing mat at Hobby Lobby some time ago and I'm appreciating it when I need it. Because I don't want to set my ironing board up every time I want to iron a little thing like this. Especially if I'm doing it on camera. I've never ironed on camera before. So we will let this heat up and then we're going to talk about some of the thing, fabrics that I pulled to add embellishments to this. 
I have pieces of a vintage apron and apron ties. I, I think I'll definitely use this. That's redundant. Oh, it's not redundant. It's um, contradictory when I say I think I'll definitely. But I would like to take pieces of this and maybe do some slow stitching and apply it to the cover. Maybe even this lace crochet and this part of a tablecloth. I don't I like the fabric here but I don't think the colors are right. This is from a kitchen curtain. I love this. I believe this was a tablecloth also. And this is just a piece of fabric and some patchwork. Let's see if we're hot enough here. So much better. way. Now for the fun part. Let's put this cover together. So this is the front. Got a bit of a crinkle there. Probably still hot enough. see where it's a lot shorter down here so I'm gonna have to make sure I have enough down there to fold up. That looks good. Okay we're looking good. Now I'm going to glue. Um, I think I will use, because this is a thin fabric, I don't want the glue to show through. So I think the art glitter glue will work better for that, won't it? Just leaving a little bit of space between the chipboard pieces so that it has room to bend, but not too much space so it's too wobbly.
thinking like there's a little too much space up here. I'm going to fold the corner up. going to trim a little bit off so it's not so bulky at the corners. I was just checking to see if the glue was showing through. had a monster headache yesterday and it's kind of like a st I'm watching a distant storm cloud. <laughs> I took my Excedrin tension headache this morning and it's keeping it at bay but I still feel it wanting to come and rain on me. So just trying to be a little low-key today and I'm hoping to get a lot done on these journals. I don't think I have to go anywhere today. I might go over to my daughter's when she gets out of work. I've got some stuff that she left here that I've been meaning to take over to her. So we'll see how it goes. That'll be after I'm done in here anyway. You can see because of this fabric and it's kind of a loose weave that it's um, wiggly, but I will be putting Tyvek across here and we will have end papers to kind of stabilize everything. I don't know if I'm using paper or fabrics on these inside covers. Haven't decided that yet. I'm just having the trouble getting this glue to come out. 
I'm really having to work at it. There. There's my cover. So I've got lots of room to add decorations and embellishments. look cute with this on the inside. But the edges are pretty raw and I don't want to have to fold them under. Maybe. We'll see. Let's think about embellishing the front cover. How are we doing on time? We don't have a lot of time left. So I could put this right along the front. Let's see. I would want to, I think, I'd want to pick the stitches out if I can and not have to cut it. It's got a little green on this edge and green on that edge. That might be pretty along there, right? Maybe. There is a lot of this color of green within the pages that I'm using. And there's enough for the front of both journals. I might do that. But I also want to have some little, little patchy pieces. And I'd like to do a little bit of slow stitching on those pieces. Make it look like they're stitched to the cover. the bare spot that didn't get printed on. Obviously I'm not going to finish this in this video because I have you know, to pick the stitches out and do the hand stitching. 
So these are white backgrounds. I need a little bit more color, I think. Well, you can see where I'm going with it. Uh, I think I'll make my final decisions on placement after I do some stitching on these pieces. And I'll probably use some of this also. I don't know if I'll put that there. I'm not sure I'm liking that. Yeah, I think this is going to be cute. And then I, I'll have to do the second cover also. So that's what we're doing. Um, I haven't decided, like I said, what to do in here yet, but we'll figure that out. So probably the next time you see this cover, I'll have that part done. And maybe these pieces already added to it. I'll do some stuff to the back too. So I'm liking it and it feels pretty cool with a little, just a little bit of softness underneath this thin fabric. The other um, linen that I'm going to use has an even thinner fabric. Where is it? Well, you did see it. I'm not sure where I put it right now. It's not this, right? Oh, here it is. So it's different color. But it's uh, a thin cotton, and it's not as, I don't know, this isn't nubby, but it's a looser weave. And this is a tighter weave cotton. But I think that'll be fun to use, too. It's still thin. You can see a little bit of color, the color of my hand in there. So it's pretty thin. So tell me what you think so far. Um... And I think it's going to go well with, with this theme of Country Rustic. What do you think? I think we're going to have fun with this. Thanks for coming today. I'm sorry if it was a little bit... I don't know. <laughs> it was not planned. I didn't know what I was doing, so you had to put up with some of that. But I think, I think we did okay today. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a creative day today. Bye-bye.